Formatting your own book used to be really daunting and scary. With Atticus, we make it as easy as possible for you to get professional quality formatting on your preferred budget, experience level, and timeline. One of the really cool things that you can do with Atticus is create a spread of images so that when you open your paperback or hardcover book, you are presented with a beautiful layout of image across two pages. Atticus is not a graphics formatting program. So while you can bring these images into Atticus, you will need to make sure that they are sized appropriately for the trim size you will be printing before you bring them into Atticus. This is going to be a two part tutorial where you learn how to create these spreads from start to finish with the images you already have created. In this first part of the video, I'm going to walk you through a variety of programs to help you size images you already have. I will not be teaching you how to create the images. So you will want to start with either royalty-free stock images, images that you have purchased a license from, something you have designed for yourself or have had an author create for you. So you already have the artwork. You just need to make sure it is the right size for the book that you will be printing. That's what we're going to cover in this lesson. So let's jump right in. Okay, we are going to start inside Book Brush. If you don't yet have a Book Brush account, I will include an affiliate link in the description box below. The Creators of Book Brush have gone above and beyond to work with Atticus authors. And not only are they offering new accounts 15 free downloads, but once you get into their custom creator, you'll see they've added Atticus trim sizes directly into the program to make sizing your images an absolute snap. So let's just do that. Once you're logged into your Book Brush account, you'll want to click on this button over here that says create new or hover over it and start with the custom creator. Now, if you look in the left sidebar here, you may recognize the little Atticus doggo icon. So start by clicking on that. Then you have all of the options for creating your images that will match perfectly with Atticus trim sizes. Now, because we are doing a two page spread, we'll want to go with the double page and make sure we do with bleed. This is the only program where you will work on both sides, both pages of the spread at the same time. So in Book Brush, click double page with bleed and then choose the trim size you will be exporting to. I am going to do six by nine in all of these examples, but you will want to choose the trim size that you plan on printing your book to. Once you have this artboard set up, you'll want to upload the image that you are going to have in the background. Again, I'm not teaching you how to create the images, just how to properly size them for Atticus. So I'm going to click on images here and my images, and I am going to either drag and drop my image or I can upload it here. So click to upload. It will take a second to load. And you can see I have my new upload image here. I have a habit of dragging and dropping everything, but you can see Book Brush gives me a little notification here. I, you do not need to drag and drop. You can just click the image and it will show up in your spread here. So then you will want to resize your image to fit the whole screen. Depending on the ratio that your image is saved as, you may need to go outside the boundaries. Just make sure it fully fills the entire portion here. And you can see this grid line, Book Brush has separated the left and right page for you. Once it is all aligned and you have it set up how you want it, you can download your artwork. If you will be using this to have your chapter start on the right side of the page, you may or may not want to add a box on top of this side to blur it out or change the opacity. That is completely optional depending on your artwork and what you are doing with. If this was a map, you wouldn't need to do that. You can choose the best for your 
book. But if you wanted to, you can come down here to elements and just maybe pick a shape, add it to your area. And then you could add a gradient or a transparency. If you don't want it to be quite so quite so opaque, you can bring that down. Basically just anything to help the words show up a little bit better. You can either have this just in the center where you'll have your text, or you can go to the very edges of the page. It is completely up to you and the content of your book, whatever is going to be most appropriate. For the purposes of this tutorial, I will stick with this here and that should work out really well. You'll want to save the changes into your account and you can download the image as a PNG or JPEG file. You do not want to download as a PDF. You cannot upload that into Atticus. So choose your options here. It will prepare your download and book brush is going to split these into two images for you, which is amazingly helpful with the program. So it just really speeds up the process and makes sure that this meeting in the middle of your two pages is absolutely seamless. Once it's loaded, you'll want to save to your computer and it's going to download that file for you. It will download in a zip folder because it is two images. So you will get two separate images and you're good to go. That is how you use book brush to size your images. Now let's move on to Canva. This is another very popular tool. I will link below as well. If you have not registered before, you can do that. There is a free plan or a pro plan. Please be sure you check out their licensing. If you are just resizing your images that you had chosen from elsewhere, you can use the free plan. However, if you are using any of the Canva images in your designs, you will want to look into their licensing and likely upgrade to their pro options. To get your images sized properly, you will need to know the trim size plus lead for your book. We do have a calculator on Atticus, which is linked below, and you'll just need to know the dimensions that you need to create your image. Then you'll click on the create a design button here and you can select custom size. Now I know that I am doing a six by nine book, which when I include the bleed, I need to make my dimensions 6.125 inches by 9.25 inches. Now with a full bleed image that extends to the very corners of the page, the ratio of length to width will not match the trim size of your book. So if I were to create this as six by nine, I would have a blank line at the bottom that is just white because the image is not tall enough. This is because when you're working with margins and trim, the printer will base it on a two page spread, but you need to make your images based on one side. So the top and the bottom will both be trimmed off at the printers and this outside edge on the left side of the page will be trimmed, but the inside edge will not be trimmed. So you only put half as much space on your single pages on the width as opposed to the height. So you can see 1.25 is half of 9.25. That is why the ratio is so, so important. Now you are actually going to need to have two pages. So you can either click, if you have the timeline open at the bottom here, you can click the plus to add an image there. If this at the bottom is closed, you can just add a page here and work with it this way. Now, what you'll have to do again is upload the image that you are working with. And this is where it gets just a little bit trickier in working in a program that is not book brush because we are creating the images separately. So I'll drag my image in here. So this is going to be the left side of the page. So I want the dog here. So I'm going to stretch this out. Now I know this size is the correct size for two exact pages. But if yours was not, and you had to stretch it out a little bit more, if you wanted a slightly different image in the center. So if I wanted to make my dog a little bit bigger, now I have to be sure that I match this center up perfectly with my next page. So this is where it can get a little bit trickier. So if you are resizing it, what I would recommend doing is pressing this duplicate button here and that's gonna duplicate the exact same size. 
Now I'm going to drag it onto this page here. And then you have to make sure you line it up perfectly to match the image. So I know if I'm looking here, this middle center here is still right in the center of my page. So if I look on this one, I also want this middle center to be right in the middle of my page. And then you can visually look if, you know, the power line pole is mostly on this side and it does line up here. Get it as good as you can make this match, but remember that these two images are meeting in the center of your book. So a tiny part of your image is going to be tucked into the crease you're not going to notice any minuscule changes if these two parts don't line up. What you will notice is if this was up higher. So if I aligned the bottom here and the top on here, that I will see because the whole picture is not going to be aligned. So make sure you have your top and your bottom aligned and get as close as you can to matching the center but tiny imperfections are not going to be noticeable because it does meet in the crease of your book. And once you have your images lined up, you can download. So click the share option, download, and then make sure you choose either PNG or JPG. Once again, you'll wanna to stick to those two image types and then just go ahead and download. And once again, you will have your perfectly sized images in a zip folder that you can unzip and upload into Atticus. And finally, let's take a look inside Adobe Express. This is another free tool that you can use. You can go to express.adobe.com to log in and start to work here. This is going to work very similar to what we did in Canva. You will need to know the trim size that you are creating first, and then you can come over here and click on custom size. Once again, I'm going to do the exact size image that I know I needed. Oops. So I want to do a 6.125 width and a 9.25 height. And I am going to create a new file once again. And once again, we will need to add a second page. From your center artboard here, there is icon to add view all pages, or you can add pages here. You can click and view all pages. You can duplicate pages and such. If you don't like to be in this view, you can just click out here. Very similar to what we did in Canva, you will need to upload your images. Where's your media here? and you'll want to upload from your device and it will bring in your picture. So once again, you'll want to line it up with the top or bottom of the page to make sure you get the right layout and then size it to fit the left side of your page. To make sure you get the perfect matching size, you can right click and copy this. And you can click over to your next page and right click and you can paste it. Now what you'll wanna do is move it so that you're seeing the other half of the image. Once again, make sure you align the top and the bottom, make sure your centers match. This does work quite well. If you look at your two images, you can see how it will look more or less in the spread if you imagine this space is not there. And that's as easy as it needs to be. As we did in Book Brush, if you want to change or add something to make this a little bit more opaque or transparent, you can just change the opacity to bring that down here. So if I bring this transparency down, I will now be able to better use dark text on this background and it will show up a little bit better. So you can do that, or you could add a, a rectangle over top of this and adjust it that way, as I did in the book brush example. But you do what is right for your book. These programs are fairly intuitive to use. Just click on the images and you have your adjustments here. Once you're all done, you can download all pages here. And again, you'll wanna go PNG or JPG and you will download them. So now you have perfectly sized images for your books. If you need to insert them into Atticus now, you can check out our tutorial on our website, which shows you how to bring them in. You can always contact our support if you have any trouble whatsoever. And there will be a second part to this video tutorial as well, showing you how to bring all of the images into 
Atticus to create the spread of your dreams. I hope you have enjoyed. If you liked this video and learned something new, please do give it a thumbs up. If you want to be notified whenever I release new videos, demos, tutorials, industry insights, all of the above, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and ring the notifications bell so you are alerted whenever I release new videos. As always, on behalf of the entire Atticus team, we wish you happy writing, formatting, and of course, publishing.